Good morning, everyone. So I know today's Monday, and today's the day I'm going to be uploading the platformer series, but I woke up with an idea for a time bubble, and it just seemed really cool, so I wanted to go ahead and do it. So what we'll set up is, you'll see she's running back and forth, but if I set this in between, then when she hits it, she slows down. Now the player can run through it normally, but any actor that overlaps it, besides the player, or even if the if you want it to affect the player, we can make it do that too, but it'll just slow everybody down, anything down, any projectiles going through, it's going to slow down. So it could kind of be like on time breakers. I think that's what it was called, time breakers, with that bullet stop thing. But anyway, let's jump over to a clean project, and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing we want to set up is the material. So I'll right-click and create a material. This would be my time bubble underscore mat. So I'm going to open that up and drag it up and set it up here. And I want this to be kind of see through, kind of translucent. So I'm going to highlight this first and I'm going to set its blend mode to translucent. And you'll see all these parameters have now changed. So I want it to kind of have a little bit of a gray color. So I'm going to hold three on the keyboard and left click for a constant three vector. Give it just a little bit of a gray color. And we're going to be using this emissive color, so I'm going to add a multiply node with M on the keyboard, left click. What this does is it'll multiply this color by a constant that we're going to set up, which I'm going to set to 50. I'm going to back that up a little bit. Uh, so this will make it glow, but I also want it to have that little cloudy texture to it. So I'm going to hold T on the keyboard and left click, or you can right click, type texture sample. You want the texture sample. Now over for the texture, I want it to be that macro variation that comes with the starter content because it has that nice little cloudy look to it. So we're going to hold M and add another multiply node so that it multiplies this by this and combines them. So one more thing we want to add, uh, or multiply rather, We'll add one more multiply node, and then we want to right click and type in Fresnel, which is F-R-E-S-N-E-L. What this does is it'll give it a nice little glowy ring right around the edge. So we'll hook that all up just like that. Hook that to the emissive. Holding one on the keyboard, we'll add a constant, because you can't really see the, the glowy thing right yet. So we'll add up the, the translucentness now. So for the value of this constant, I'm going to set it to about 0.25, so that it's about a quarter of the way. And now you can kind of see it's got that, that look in the middle. You can kind of play with this to see, uh, play with these variables to get the look you like. So basically what this is, is how see through the center of it is. And this is how wide out is. So if I set that to 1, you'll see it's just like a little... Oh, it's all the way in. And if I set that to 0.1, then it's... Oh, no. The higher you set it, then the, the more of a ring it is. I went the opposite way. My bad. So... <laughs> but I'm going to leave it at 5. I, I don't know too much about materials and all that but uh, it, a good person to look up for that kind of stuff is Dean Ashford here on YouTube he does a lot of really cool material stuff this is where I learned a little bit about that Fresnel thing it's from him so with all that oh wait you know what one more thing we can add real quick is the panner node so that it'll have that little swirly effect so I'm gonna hold P on the keyboard and left click and that'll give us this panner that I'm gonna hook directly into the UVs on the texture sample and I'm going to set its X speed, just something real low, 0 0.01, just so it's kind of a little swirly effect. That looks nice. So with all that done, now we can actually create the blueprint for our time bubble. So I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class of an actor. This is going to be the time bubble underscore BP. Open that up. And then we want to add two components straight off. So I'm going to add a sphere. This will represent the, the area. 
And then with the sphere highlighted, I'm going to add one more that is the sphere collision. This is what will the enemies or whatever will actually overlap that will slow them down. So I'm going to highlight the sphere. I'm going to set its material to the time bubble. And then I'm going to set its collision to no collision. Because this is the one we want to mess with. But we don't want them to get blocked up trying to get to it. So I'm going to highlight the sphere. And then kind of get a good angle on your thing so you can see it. And then scale it up to just inside the ring. Reason we're doing that is because at the very end I'm going to show you how to make this thing grow when it spawns. So, like if I show you real quick, wherever this is scaled to, that sphere automatically follows. So we'll compile all that real quick. And then with the sphere collision selected, scroll all the way down in the details panel to the events. And on begin overlap and end overlap, we want to set up some things. So for the begin overlap, we want to drag off the other actor and find out if the other actor that's overlapping has a tag. Now if you're wanting yours to affect the player, you'll just skip this step. But for the tag we want to check is if it's the player. So I'll type in player, add a branch, and if false then I want to set its custom time dilation. Now the time dilation works, um, so the normal time dilation in the game is set to 1, that's normal speed. So when I set this to 0.25, the, whoever's overlapping will be running at a quarter speed. So 0.5 is half speed, 1 is normal, 2 is double time, 3 is triple time, etc. So I'm going to copy that set custom time dilation node, hook it to the end overlap, and then I want to default it back to 1. We'll hook that up just like that. Then I want to save everything so I can drag out and show you real quick. So when my character overlaps, you'll see that green thing is still spinning normal speed, but my character has slowed down. So another thing we can do is we can make it grow so that it, when it spawns, it starts small and then boom, like that. So I'm going to delete that real quick. Inside the time bubble, I'm going to highlight the sphere in the viewport and set its scale to 0.1 across the board. Compile that and then inside its event graph on begin play, we'll call a custom event. So right click, add a custom event called growth. And we'll call that right off the begin play node. Now what we want to do for that is we want to drag out our sphere and get its world scale so that we can also set its world scale 3D. So we'll take its current scale and then we want to add to it. I'm going to add 0.1 across the board. Then we want to find out if the world scale is equal to whatever you want the max size to be. I found that 5 in everything was good for mine, but whatever yours might be, you know, you might want bigger, smaller, whatever. So this right here, this float, is the error tolerance. So I'm going to set that to 0 0.01. This is basically how close it can get to this before it says it's finished. Uh, if you leave it to zero, it'll just keep going. But I'm going to add a branch, hook that up, and on the false, I'm going to add a delay, set to 0 0.01, and then we'll just call that growth function one more time. And with that all done, I'll drag this out in the world, make sure I've compiled saved and then you'll see that was quick you rotate the character so you can see it so now it'll actually grow you can adjust those variables like if you want it to grow slower you can do that or if you want it to grow faster 
Now the way we don't have our player affected, so if I run through it right now you'll see he is affected still. But let's say you don't want the player affected. So we'll right click, open up, go to the viewport, highlight this self, the very first thing in the components tab, and in the details panel we'll search for tags. We'll add one called player. And that's pretty much all it takes. So now when he runs through it, it doesn't affect him. But if there was another actor running around, just like that one I showed you at the beginning, she would be affected. Now the spawning, the way I spawned it in the other one is real simple. I'll just show you real quick. So all I did was I just set up a keyboard event. So I just typed in Q. There it is. And then it was just spawn actor from class. The class being that time bubble. And the transform. We'll just get the actor transform. Oh, one more thing we need to do to the material. So you'll notice when I go inside that it it looks like it just disappears but it hasn't so inside the material one thing we need to do is highlight this uh, the results node and over underneath where we set the blend mode just click this box that says two-sided then apply so what that does is just like it says it uh, makes it to where it renders on both sides of the mesh so now anything inside this bubble will be affected. So like if I go back and I remove that tag just like that. So yeah I thought it would be a pretty interesting little effect to set up. Um, again if you want to learn more about the materials and stuff like that I don't know too much about that but definitely check out Dean's channel Dean Ashford uh, he's got some really awesome stuff going over materials and all the different things you can do with it. So, yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by, and I will get the platformer videos uploaded pretty soon. Bye-bye.